The Indiana Pacers have finally split up big men DeMontis Sabonis and Miles Turner and have started to turn the corner towards the next page of Indiana Pacers basketball. Tyrese Halliburton has been acquired and he's the new young centerpiece playing alongside Malcolm Brogdon in the backcourt. Miles Turner finally gets a frontcourt to himself and we'll finally get to see what a frontcourt led by Miles Turner looks like and what type of post game Miles Turner actually has. And the Pacers have also added Jalen Smith as a new young piece from the Phoenix Suns. There is a reason to be optimistic about the future of the Indiana Pacers. However, it is very important to note that the Pacers seem to be taking the direction of a short-term retool as opposed to a multi-year rebuild. Don't necessarily expect a Malcolm Brogdon trade. Don't expect multiple top three to five lottery picks. That's just not the direction the Pacers are heading. And that's important to note as we head into the future of the Indiana Pacers. Malcolm Brogdon, Cyrus Halliburton, Chris Duarte, Miles Turner, Jalen Smith, and Isaiah Jackson. Those are the core six pieces for the Indiana Pacers moving forward, most likely alongside whoever else they draft over the next couple of years. You could potentially include Buddy Heald in there but I wouldn't be surprised and I would expect personally to see him move within the next 12 months. I like that core group, but just like the Pacers over the last couple of seasons, all they are is good in the short term and in the long term. There's no budding superstar player. There's no multiple all-stars that evidently show themselves on this list. Therese Halliburton as a singular all-star, sure. Multiples or a superstar, I don't really see the upside currently available. If you want to argue that, make that argument in the comment section. I'm down to talk about it. I just don't see it. And there isn't ter anything terribly wrong with just having a good team. This is a team that can likely be a top six seed in the East. But that's what the Pacers have been now since Victor Oladipo suffered his career altering injury. They've just been a good team, a top six, top eight team in the East and nothing more than that. And you would hope with the moves that they have made at the trade deadline that the goal from an organizational standpoint would be to improve and to push towards being a contender once again to be a top tier eastern conference team but with the retool being the direction they are going as opposed to a rebuild and no clear candidate on the roster to be that leading all nba caliber player who can lead an nba title contender by himself without multiple all-stars it's going to be tough to see the Pacers as a top tier contender. It is also very important to note as to why the Pacers are just retooling and not rebuilding that the Pacers only made some changes and made trades at the trade deadline and made players available because the Pacers owner finally recognized that there was a change to his bank account. The attendance for the Pacers was very poor to start the year, and that's why he started to do a little of a mini, mini rebuild, but more so just a retool, even though rumors have it that members of the Pacers front office had been asking for the owner to agree to such moves and changes for the last two to two and a half seasons. The big reason why you can expect there will be no significant rebuild in Indiana. That would mean low attendance for multiple years, poor performing teams, which lowers attendance, lowers fan interest, and ultimately affects the bottom line of the Pacers owner. That's why they're going into a retool. There's not going to be any big long fix here, simply because of ownership. Agree with it or not, that's the reason why the rebuild is happening the way it is in Indiana. Again, it's also worth noting that they're probably not going to be bad enough to get top and top five prospects in the NBA draft. I struggled to see where the upside lies for the Pacers to be much better than they were two years ago in the 2019-20 season where they finished as the four seed. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the DeMontis Sabonis trade was an amazing trade for the Pacers. They got great value. They traded Sabonis for an amazing young guard in Cyrus Halliburton who can help now and in the long run as he continues to develop. They have him under team control for the next seven years. He is the future of this Pacers organization. And I think he's a fine fit alongside Malcolm Brogdon as well, who I think still to this day is just better as a two guard 
being primarily off the ball, and he's going to get much more of an opportunity to do that now alongside Tyrese Halliburton. And ultimately, I think Tyrese Halliburton is going to be an all-star. I think Tyrese Halliburton has a bright future. I really like Tyrese Halliburton's game. But is he going to be good enough to be the leading solo star on a championship team? Probably not. Probably not. I also like the Karis LeVert trade. I think trading him away for a first-round pick was a good pick. But a Cavaliers first-round pick isn't exactly going to be acquiring you, most likely, an elite-level talent. It's going to be an out-of-the-lottery draft pick. And so it's simply going to be a nice complimentary piece, which again is good, but that's what the Pacers are, is good. Could you make the argument that Cyrus Halliburton could be the number two option alongside a better star or a higher quality star that could then lead a team to a title? Yeah, I think that argument can be made, and I can believe that one. But as a number one option without a co-star, that might be a little bit more difficult and a little bit less unlikely. So what would I have rather the Pacers had done? What are their other options? What could have given them that higher upside that could potentially make them an NBA title contender down the road? Well, the only other option they really had is more dedication and commitment to a rebuild as opposed to a retool. And there's no guarantee that that would have been better. I'm not necessarily saying that that would have solved their problems, but ultimately sometimes you just don't have an avenue to become an NBA title contender. The Pacers could have rebuilt it for a year or two, and they may be able to get away with it anyways if they get a top three to top five pick in this year's draft. But they eliminated their chances of being able to have multiple years of a, having a higher chance of acquiring multiple top end talents with having multiple years of top five NBA draft picks. Now, but they still hit on a pick late in the draft that adds a co-star to Halliburton and then do things change? Of course, that's a possibility. Not all stars are drafted top five. We know that. But they're lessening their chances of being a top end contender. They're lessening their chances of acquiring that type of talent to have multiple stars or an elite level superstar on this team. The Indiana Pacers heading into next season will be good enough to compete for the play-in tournament. They just will be. They will not have a top-end lottery pick again after this season. And so the only way that they're going to be able to have multiple stars is via a high-profile trade is going to be on the continued development of Tyrese Halliburton. And if they're one top-end early lottery first-round pick in this 2022 NBA draft, hits and turns in an all-star now sure the pacers could make a great draft pick even while not drafting in the top three of the top five of a draft find a co-star at cyrus halliburton or just do it via the 2022 draft but everything they are planning for right now is setting themselves up to be a good team they are not allowing themselves to have a couple of years of opportunity to acquire that top end talent around cyrus halliburton which again isn't necessarily a bad thing but they are setting themselves up to have less opportunities to make themselves more than just a good team. If they don't acquire that other talent, Tyrese Halliburton is going to have to become a top 10 player in the NBA for them to have a title contention window. And again, don't get me wrong. A team of Tyrese Halliburton, Brogdon, Turner, Jalen Smith, Duarte, and Isaiah Jackson, along with whoever else they draft over the first rounds over the next couple of years, is going to be a fine, solid Eastern Conference team that can probably regularly finish in the top six in the East, assuming that they draft slash acquire some wings. But are they ever going to be a consistent top four seed? Are they ever going to be a regular to get out of the first round? I would say no, but I'd love to be proven wrong. And again, I love the Tyrese Halliburton trade, especially for the Pacers. I love Tyrese Halliburton now and moving forward in the NBA. I think it's a really good talent and a really good piece to be building around. But for him to be the centerpiece and number one option for a title contending team, I don't think he's quite at that level. That's no knock on Cyrus Halliburton. There's a very small amount of guys in the league that can do that without a co-star. That's the key. They get a co-star, this changes. But the path for the Pacers to get a co-star is going to be difficult. The Pacers have a good roster moving forward. But ultimately, they are going to have to have some very good draft selections, and in particular, a very good draft selection 
for this team to become an NBA title contender.